Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Oh boy, this took a little bit to get started here, Corey. Do you think we can take this and turn it into some gold? Ah, well, I mean, if we could get some mimosas. (laughs) (laughs) These guys have got me thirsty now. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Let's give it a shot. Today on the Farm for Fun show at the Louisville National Farm Machinery Show and Tractor Pull, we have a larger than normal set of guests that are tied with ag and tractor pulling. They have what looks like a colorblind assortment of pulling tractors, and I think one of the only Kloss pulling tractors and... Tease a Fent pulling tractor that's coming. I'm not even going to try to get all these guys as followers, but they are into direct-to-consumer beef, grain purchasing, custom farming, YouTube, and all the other socials. And they are 100% Sukup customers, customers, might I add. <laughs> yes. Uh, please welcome from Wisconsin, Emily, Avery, and Mason. I feel like we need like a drum roll. Right, we do. That's a lot of te- a lot of hype. That's a lot. Yeah. So like yeah. normally I don't prepare intros for more than one guest, so it's hard right. to include everyone. So yeah, welcome right. guys to the great. show. You are our first interview here at National Farm Machinery Show, and you are have been troopers sticking with us, the guinea pigs, mm-hmm. while we have technical difficulties. It is fascinating the amount of work that you can put in yesterday. And, and you show up today and nothing works. I'm sure in tractor pulling, that's exactly the same. <laughs> that's just <laughs> life in general with a farming operation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get you guys introduced. And ladies first. Emily, you go. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then uh, we'll continue down the line. So I listened to your guys' podcast with Mary Pat, and she was talking about her title in agriculture. And my title is I Exist in Agriculture. Um, I do all the things. Um, I have a direct-to-consumer beef business with the beef from the farm. Um, I am the editor of our YouTube channel and also mostly the videographer that I just stick the camera in their face and force them to talk. Um, I also do marketing for other ag businesses and a lot of other things that I'm forgetting, but that's wow. just to me. That's, uh, that's a quite a few things. Yeah, and I'm definitely forgetting something, but... <laughs> Take care of the calves. Yeah, calves. Nice. Well, that's a good intro. We'll dive deeper into that. <laughs> okay, Avery, why don't you go next? Uh, I guess I don't know. Just a farmer. Just but a farmer. Got a spraying business, too. And I get the camera stuck in my face by Emily. So are you <laughs> the new age custom? Well, so that's actually my dad and his business partner's business. Okay. But... um. Mason and I and another of a uh, one of my classmates has a has a custom spraying business that we do. So okay. Okay. that's actually base egg is what it's called. There you go. So, so you your connection to Emily is girlfriend. Oh, you're gonna claim her today. Yep. Yes. Unfortunately. Right after <laughs> Valentine's Day even. Yeah, yeah, she's a trooper yesterday, uh traveling, farm show, tractor pulling. Yeah. No yeah. Valentine's deal. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. She said she needed Starbucks, so yeah, we got her. We got her that first thing in the morning, and then we were just full steam ahead after hey, that. Priorities. I love Great. this. All right, Mason. Before we get too deep into this, how and who are you? I'm Mason. Uh, I guess. Also a farmer. Just a farmer. <laughs> just a farmer. Um, <laughs> just fill in wherever, I guess. So how how are we going to approach this, Corey? If they are just farmers. Because there's, okay. there's more to They're just not farming, right? I can give a better intro for that there right myself. There you go. Okay. Spokes lady. <laughs> so we have the YouTube channel, New Age Custom Farming, which is from their dad and his business partner's job is New Age Custom, or their business is New Age Custom Farming. These guys step in for New Age Custom Farming, do all the things. Mason's mainly the machine guy and also in the airflow, planter, combine. And then Avery does a spring, but that's also now part of their other business. And there's lots of other things that go on. But they're not just farmers. They're doing <laughs> lots of things. No, that is that is super cool. And we're going to get into so many different directions on this show. So listeners, hang on. But the first thing we're going to talk about is what you guys are down here for. So we're National Farm Machinery Show. Also the home of the largest indoor tractor pole, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's like it's like the Daytona 500, a tractor pulling. Yeah. You know, first of the year. Um, yeah, 
It's the Super Bowl. It's the Super Bowl it's for tractor Super pulling. Bowl. But you have to qualify. You have to get invited, yep. right? Not so everybody you, can come. Yep. So you apply, and then uh, they go through your application and accept you or deny. Okay. And you have to you have to place well enough in the previous year, um, basically to be good enough to show up i guess you or know, they have don't a want. really cool tractor yeah right. that helps too if okay. you have different colors that helps too right. you know they don't like to see a john deere in a case ih show they want to see some color in every class because right. you know there's so they many want diversity yeah there's so yeah. many fans of different different tractors so they you know they want to are you the only class tractor well so that's um the class is just some of our friends actually okay so um the guys that built our tractor Built that built one. Built that one also. Yep. So the guys that did the sheet metal and the chassis work and all that on our tractor and the motor work, it's two separate guys. Yeah. They each are an owner in the class. Mm -hmm. But the only thing like Kloss or John Deere or New Holland on a, on a tractor is just the, the plastic or the paint, right? Yeah. Not a point of well, <laughs> well it, dep it depends. So a, like pro, a pro stock, uh, yeah, pretty much. A pro stock, yes. But in lower level classes, you like in our class, we have a limited pro, which isn't here. And you have to have a, a red block in it if okay. it's a red tractor. Gotcha. And, and a and a rear end, like the rear end housing out of out of a red farm tractor, a, red tractor okay. a farm tractor, yep. Well, yeah. so how many pulling tractors do you have? Two. two. We have two, two. ourselves. Okay. Yep, yep. But we got lots of friends with them. So. <laughs> there was like a convoy of yeah. three semis that came down with eight separate tractors, yeah. all pro stocks, yep. all from our same club too. So yep. we're Badger State tractor pullers. Okay. So tell us a little bit more. Maybe, uh, Mason, why don't you start? Who is Badger State? What, what does that even entail? So, well, Badger State tractor pullers, it's a pulling a club. club that uh, our dad is the president of. And you go around to different fairs in southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois. We're in Dubuque this year, I think. Yep. yep. And uh, put on a show. They hire classes, and they put on a show. We put on a show, and you come and watch tractor pulling. Okay. Well, how many pulls, then, does this club put on a year? A lot. I think like 30. 30-something. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's not many weekends that yeah. were. Yeah, there's only 52 weekends in a year. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's multiple weeks where we have pulls in the middle of the week. Um, like in July, it's like yeah, it's Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're pulling. Yeah. We it's love your life. We, yeah, we yeah, love yeah. tractor <laughs> pulling, but those weeks we call hell weeks. Because you guys tractor pull as much as Tanner golfs. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> but yeah, hell weeks exactly. I mean, how do you get anything else done? It's hard. It's tough. <laughs> it's, it's it's very tough. You try and plan farming around tractor pulling. <laughs> How long have you been tractor pulling? Uh, Dad's been at it, oh, he's been the president for 20 years. 27 years, I think he's been president. So over 30. So yeah, I mean, I think he said the first time he went down the track, he was 13. And mm -hmm. you guys are how old now? I'm I 23. How old are you? 25. <laughs> I think I'm 26. After 21, <laughs> you just quit. Yeah, it doesn't really I matter. Know. I, I have to, like, count back and, like, figure out what So when did you guys first go down the track? Uh, 18. Yep. 18. So they don't let you do it when you're 13 now? or when 16, you, you can. can do it okay. when you're 16, but Mom told us we yeah, could not until <laughs> we were 18. Dang moms. So mom mom yeah. pushed it down the road a yeah. little bit. That's all right, though. Yeah. So right now, who's, who's the driver? Who drives? So Avery and I share our limited pro, and then Dad drives this pro stock which that's gonna change <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay when you say share so you you enter a poll yep are you allowed to switch drivers so this like this weekend it'll be mason then the next poll we go every other poll okay yep. yep i just wonder you know if it's the tractor then it should be all set up the same no matter who's gonna You're sit right. behind the steering wheel right. but i'm sure there's a little different skill mm -hmm. for for who it is to where uh that might be unfair if you were able to switch yeah, yeah. You can put so what what happens is the points system that we run it with stays with the tractor. Okay. So I could put you on the tractor and it would be It just follows the tractor. Yep, it follows okay. the tractor. Yep. I'm sure we'd do well if I was Right. The right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, that, okay. I I, I want to do so many different things with this conversation, but I I first want to tackle the passion. Because 33 32 poles a year, mm -hmm. multiple times a week. It's not an inexpensive hobby. 
No. No. Where? <laughs> obviously, your dad had it. Is yep. that why you guys have it? Yep. yep. So start start with you, Mason. What? Why? What do you like the most about it? I mean, it's it's just the people. It's so much fun. You go. I mean, it's a like you said. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of work to go do, and the people are just great that you go around. I mean, if you're broke down in the pits, something happens to your tractor, you have a hundred people there trying to help you. And I mean, it's it, it is just a big family. At the end, I mean, we all we're only com- competitors when you're on the track. Off the track, you're all everyone's friends. And even even on the track, I would say they they'll help you like. I was at, we were at a poll this year, one of the fir- earlier ones, and took off and fuel lines were leaking and it was just a bad deal because we were trying to get my dad's motor in, so we kind of neglected our tractor. And there was there's our the competitors in our class were coming onto the track. Open, I'm sitting on the tractor. They're opening sh- side shields up, trying to figure it out for you. They want to beat you at your best. Yep. You know, they don't want to oh. beat you off the track. Yep. That's a good point, Corey. I didn't, I hadn't thought about that. So. You're at a pole. How many minutes does it take with you behind the steering wheel of the tractor? Like 15 seconds yeah. down the track. I was going to say, my videos are 13 seconds long yeah. of them going down the track. So that's why the people matter, Corey, is t- they drive for less than a minute. Yeah. yeah. you got to be around everyone else the, the rest of the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Right. And it's fun. I mean, we just we have a lot of fun with it. And these yeah. poles... It, you know, you might say it's the weekend, but I'm sure you're working on them in between the poles, right? Oh, like definitely. you're rebuilding yeah. and doing all that. I mean, yep. I know last year when we talked to one, like, what they will change the oil between every pole or something like that. Is that? Yeah, yeah. we change them every three runs, three, three four runs. runs. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which is, I mean, that, that's that's as easy as it gets. Yeah. Oil changes. So <laughs> explain your explain your class, like what what the parameters are in your class. I'll let Mason take this one. It's uh, uh, so it's a 4.1 inch inlet. Turbo. This is our this is our, our class our, our class. Yeah, so everyone has to have a 4.1 inch 4.1 inch turbo that's inlet and it's a four and a half inch exhaust wheel. Okay. On 640 cubes, cubic inch motor, um, no intercooler, and it's uh, P pump P uh, 16 mil P pump. Yep. And it has to be a stock housing, and uh, you have to have a transmission housing and a rear end housing. Yep. Everything in them is different, but. Uh, and like the pro stocks are a component chassis is what they call them so there's nothing factory about a yep. pro stock yep our tractors you got housings on them and so that's your, about all your class stuff. is kind of standardized everyone can have has to have the same yep same, rules, same equipment same stuff yeah there's a lot of there's even in the pro stock so there's they have to have the same same stuff relatively speaking so too. how do you differentiate yourself how do you win be better. You be just better. <laughs> I mean, what's the skill? Is it it's starting? All, is it, it you know all uh, the feel and the throttle or not what? coming out of the hole too hard and pulling the tires off as we call it? Um, you know, hooking up as soon as possible and yeah, because you you know you, if you think it's only three hundred feet, so you've got you got to get that sled moving. The weight's not on you if you know how the sled works. Yep. You know the weight's not on you at the beginning, so you want to take off as hard as you can to get get momentum, get momentum going. But you know if you if you we call it sidestepping the clutch and just go. Yeah. I mean, it can work on some tracks, but then other tracks, like a looser track, it'll pile a bunch of dirt up, and yeah. then you got to drag that with you all the way down the track too. So there's – and then putting weights on the tractor to, uh, you know, you put too much weight on the nose and you drive it down the track, well, you're not hooked up then. Yeah. You know, it's 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 one giant physics problem. It's like what I like to call so it. You don't want to prematurely yeah. spin out. Right. Yep. <laughs> right. Wow. It just looks like, you know. When, when it looks watch, so simple, yeah. But it's – you stand down there and you watch the track and the track changes so much yep. in a class because it'll get tore up and or you'll find a lane or you know it's just which here is the same track for same dirt right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right for as long as it's been i know ryan yep. recently told a story about that yeah yeah yep. but it, it changes too because it dries out okay so know? in every sport if you're not pushing the envelope of the rules <laughs> you're not trying hard enough so I'm not saying you guys do this, but what would be some ways that maybe allegedly some people push the envelope to? Be I'd better? say tires. tires. Tires are the biggest thing. Your, your tires can only be 210 inches. 210 inches round, and, and then 25 uh, inches wide. Yep. So they'll push them right, right to that to 25. Limit. I mean, there's people out. There. They're measuring tires here, and all the tire cutters are here with their sanders. Yeah. Sanding yep. down the sides a little bit on a couple sets because you want them as wide as you can. I mean, yep. how much room? Can, I mean, I've been thinking about sanding like a tire, and it's like going to pop like a balloon. How much r- rubber is there? There's a lot on the fill. It's okay. it's just on the edge of the lug. 
So okay. there's there's a lot of rubber on the okay. face of them. Gotcha. The, another crazy thing about the tires that you wouldn't expect, there's four pounds of air in them. Four pounds. Four yeah. PSI. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, anywhere from three to three five. To, three to five, six. Which yeah. I believe it. You know, like in our 95-20 for tillage, I think we're running like six. Right. You know, yep. nine. Like, right? Yep. You, wanna, you want more traction. So it makes right. sense. Right. Yep. But you don't want them low enough. If they're too low, the, the center will cave in. Yeah. You know, so that's, it's it's a there's big game. And it's you're... The tractor that you guys drive is a New Holland. No, ours so is a case. Oh, yours is the case. Okay. Yep. Dad's is a New Dad's Holland. Dad's is a New Holland. Yep, yep. But it's a T8. There aren't very many blue tractors. That's the only New Holland Pro Stock in the, for sure in the country. I mean, even overseas, I, at that horsepower level, that's the only one. Wow. And what, what horsepower level is that again? I can't remember if we had you say that. It's 4,000 plus. Jeez. A little, yeah, a little over 4,000, I would say. How much do you think is getting to the ground? Mo- I mean, a lot. all of it. <laughs> when you <laughs> not, it, no, it, not all, not all. Of it. There's obviously like, dry, dry when, train loss. But when you're hooked up going and you nail the throttle, it'll set you back in the seat. Yep. Whew. What would that thing do on pavement? Like, could you ever done like a speed one, like a like a drag race? I mean, no. they'd probably go like 70 miles an hour. Whew. Well, you can ask your dad since he had his little accident yeah. situation oh, yeah. a while ago. With that was it. a long. Time. What happened that there? Was a long time ago. Uh, he he driving their tractor because their tractor used to be his tractor yeah. before he built the pro stock and the clutch got stuck no or something so got stuck it, they call it sticking a rack or sticking a plunger uh the pump stays sticks wide open oh yeah and he was out in the driveway revving it up to see if the the data logger the computer system is rpm it started off rpms so he was trying to get it to the rpm just to make sure it would run yep and it stuck wide open he went flying flying across the highway in front of our farm the way he tells the story is he was i we were really young i don't even know <laughs> but he was going straight across the ditch out into a field you know we've got a field driveway right across from our driveway yeah. and he was going and he saw a car coming with a car seat in the back seat and there's nothing you know there's nothing you can do so he he turned it to the left jumped highway 60 went out did some donuts like trying to you know we have safety them out. yeah we have safety shutoffs we have an air gate a guillotine that shuts in front of the turbo and a fuel dump and he was trying to get them you know but i mean you're going 70 miles an hour you know and finally what the shifters are between your legs and uh he, he got knocked out on the roll cage and actually slid it into neutral this really? When he slumped down in the seat. The way he says, too, is the steering wheel was bent in a U and the, both the brake pedals were broke off. Because yep. you just can't stop them. No, there's no stopping <laughs> it. But he didn't roll it. He stayed in the cage and all that. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Yikes. So that's why our sheet metal is new. Okay. That's that's what updated our tractor was <laughs> okay. that incident. Because it, it was a 1066, and now it's a MX210 hood, okay. hood on it. So Nice. Okay, we... Have talked a lot about that, but I we'll come back to it. I want to give Emily though a chance to kind of tell her story because she's she's the girlfriend. Oh yeah, right. All important. Oh, right. <laughs> extremely extremely important. Right. But you signed up for this. Yep. You signed up for thirty three polls a year. I did well. So I at tractor polls, I do the registration or help with the video board. Okay. So at every tractor pull, we have a video board that does a replay, and so I help with that too. So I'm working at tractor pulls too because. I don't want to follow them around, first of all, the entire time. Like, that's just not very, very fun for me. And then it also gives me something to make right. a little income, too. Somebody's got to pay the bills. Yeah, so right. yep. that's that's my little contribution. You're not going to get a tractor? <laughs> See, I was going to start a rumor that we we're building a tractor just for me, but I don't think I should start that rumor. <laughs> all right, this is a great place to launch a rumor. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how did you meet Avery? <laughs> oh, this is a great oh, sounds like a story. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> so we met in high school um, at an FFA field trip, and we started talking for a while after that. We were actually taking the garbage back to the high school after the field trip together. Um, hung out for a while after that, and then somebody decided to ghost me. <laughs> She's so not over it. I'm yeah, not clearly. over it. This is in high school. This is like 10 years later. <laughs> we were at Culver's. I remember this. So Culver's, first, just a little <laughs> insert here. The first Culver's is in our hometown. Yeah. Oh. So it's like so a staple. Staple part <laughs> like of our sta- diet. Yeah. Staple yeah. part of our <laughs> life is Culver's. Yeah. So we were at Culver's, and then he dropped me off at home. Never talked to me again after that. Just I recall it a little differently. Took the garbage home. out. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> went, Come on, man. <laughs> went for milk. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so then we didn't talk for a while. I mean, we kind of ran in the same circle in high school. I mean, I was really, I'm really good friends with his cousin, who also works on the farm and stuff. Um, I was involved in FFA, so I didn't grow up on a farm. My grandparents had a dairy farm, but my mom's a gym teacher. My dad designs water parks, so no relation to agriculture at all, really. Um, and then I joined 4-H when I was younger, and then FFA, and I always knew that I really liked agriculture, but no direct tie to it. Um, so then I went to college at UW-Madison for animal science and life sciences communication, which is essentially agriculture journalism because I knew that I liked the science side of agriculture, but also talking about it. And then I had a job at Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, which is our milk checkoff in the state, doing consumer trust. Um, I guess before that, though, before I started working there, when I was in college, Avery re-entered my life. Uh -huh. um, I, like I said, hung out with his cousin a lot, ran in the same circle. I don't even know how we started talking. She, had a, she had a house within throwing distance of Camp Randall. So the yeah. tailgates were good, so I just started showing up to those. It was and convenient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not, Avery, you're not helping. <laughs> yeah, that's, we've been in this hole for a while, boys. It's all right. He was getting harassed yesterday for not, these, both of these two are being harassed for not being nice to me on our YouTube channel, so. It gets views. It, it does. People do like that. But um, so <laughs> somehow you re-entered my life, probably because I had a really nice location for a house in college. And then we started dating again. Um, Here we are. Took a while for him to ask me out. He's waiting a little bit on that one. But here we are. I don't even know how many years later. <laughs> we don't know our anniversary. so You don't know your anniversary? Oh, no. That's why he never asked you out. I mean, it's a strategic play, so he doesn't have to remember a date. Well, so he was going to ask me out. So on the <laughs> UW-Madison campus, we have, it's called the Terrace, which is a super fun place to hang out in the summer. And he was going to ask me to be his girlfriend there. Well, I invited him there. He shows up and like all of my friends are there. So he chickened out and didn't ah. ask me out then. UW-Madison, that's not like Wisconsin Badgers, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, that is. Yep. yep. Okay. Got to th I, I think in that terms like when the Hawkeyes are playing the Badgers yeah. yep. not yep. a Hawkeye fan I'm an Iowa State guy <laughs> but like I always see that so yep. you were also on a radio show yeah right, I, I hosted a radio show in college called Ag Chat where we talked about agriculture um, and so right in downtown Madison like the audience was Madison people although we never really knew our audience parameters because they don't give you any insights on yeah. that so we were just kind of talking into thin air probably but was this on like a uh 1040, like WHO, what's the... AM? AM. Was it like an AM radio station? Yeah, I could almost do our entire intro of what our show was. So it was WSU. Do it. Do no, it. I don't... Come, come on. on. Come <laughs> on. Right on the spot. You can't say that. Yeah. Now. I know. Now I'm going to forget. It was like, welcome to Ag Chat on 97.7 WSUM. There you go. And then you had to do your whole plug about like the FPP or whatever it is, the, what you can and can't say on student radio. And so you, that was that, the daily show, weekly? Weekly. Weekly. Gotcha. So it was just me and some of my friends from college, and we would write up a whole, like, look at different agriculture articles and things going on in agriculture, have, like, different guests on, interview them, just talk about agriculture for so an So kind of like what we're doing. Yeah. So are you going to start a podcast, or do maybe you have a podcast? I'm dabbling in something on our YouTube channel called Beyond the Barn, where I'm talking to different young people our age in agriculture, but talking more about what they're doing outside of agriculture. Because if you look at any of my social media, like my target audience of whatever I share is not farmers. Like these two can talk to farmers all they want, but I'm trying to talk to consumers because there's such a disconnect between consumers and agriculture but if you think about it like we are so similar to consumers the only thing that's different is our occupation exactly really um so i try and share about agriculture with general consumers and so that's what beyond the barn is yep. is talking about people's life outside of agriculture but then this is also what they do in ag kind of showing that we're real people yeah as well right yeah. mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that one makes sense showing that we're not just farmers too. yeah yeah <laughs> like so Avery going back yeah, to have, their beginning they have insane saying. obsessions with high horsepower tractors yeah. Right. Right. yeah 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 we're gonna need those inputs to go down a little bit we need, <laughs> we need a little more profit margin so we can keep this 
train a float, yeah. boat a float, I guess. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you just did not tractor pull, you'd have wow. a bike, right? That's, like, see, you that's, could go that's, to every tractor pull and win. I said this the other day. You could go to every tractor pull and win, and you'd still lose money, right? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no that's possible passion. way. That's passion. That is the definite You're not making if, any money. If, if Sukup would hook us up with a sponsorship, though, that would help. You know, they sponsor a couple pulling tractors up at a yeah. Farm Progress show. They had a couple in our booth, and they'd start them oh. up and just – Ruin the whole recording. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they finally caught on and they would wait and we'd wrap up at like 10 o'clock. And as soon as we did that, you'd hear fire. Right yeah. Because yeah. yeah. some little kid would come by and want to see it. Right. Oh, yeah. People uh, wanted to listen to those tractors way yeah. more than they wanted to listen to us. Yeah. Well, it's pretty clear. Yeah. It's still cool. It, yeah. yeah. It's still cool. <laughs> it <laughs> is. We normally try to throw a break in early on, but we have had so much fun so far. We're now going to do kind of like a, a deeper dive, a little fun game, get you guys to answer some questions. Right. Okay. When you text each other, what's the most used emoji? Emily likes to like post, and it drives me yeah. nuts. Oh, so like it's not even an emoji. You like just on the iPhone when you can like yeah. like a text. It, yeah. Oh, that drives me nuts, too. So, so what's, so what's so your intent? It. You do it just because yeah. it drives them nuts? Okay. Oh. Well, what do you mean, like what's her intent, Tanner? You do the same damn That's thing. That's why I want to know. Because <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's like an, okay, I got it, 10-4. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's instead of me having to type out 104 which is a quick text in my phone that's me I like I got it so the quick text should pop right up right yeah don't don't you have to click the hold the text and then click the like button it's literally more steps to like it than it is just to say oh well, no it's even because you have to click the 104 in the send that's true it's the ultimate flex though if someone sends you a message and then you just hold out and then like 10 hours later you hit like <laughs> oh. and then you get a, like a notification and it's like where is it right. oh, it's a freaking like mm. or go back in the text yeah. and like something it's like where is it well, I, do that sometimes. On. I do that sometimes when they don't respond to yep. me too is i'll go and i'll do like the exclamation point of yeah. be like hello what's the answer? <laughs> we, we did this to emma this morning i asked emma a question she didn't answer so Corey said a question mark or yeah. something like that yep uh, she went across the river last night and never came home. She had a little fun yeah. last night. <laughs> 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 We're going to kill it. Don't do it. Don't talk anymore. Okay, next question. If you could have a rewind button or a pause button for life, which one would you choose? Like pause, like what do you well, mean? Like, like how like long can we be paused? I tell the TV goes to sleep, I would assume. Right? Like... You hit pause, and you could sit there and take in that moment for as long as you wanted to. I feel like pause. Okay. Yeah, I would agree, pause. We're not rewinding? We're not going I, back? I don't know. It'd be kind of cool, but there's, I don't know. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah. I, th- I, th- I think I'd rewind. I Actually, would, financial I reasons, something. I would rewind. Yeah. <laughs> think of the wisdom you have now that yeah, you do I know? 10 years ago. Do I know everything when I go back that I, I do now? I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. rewind. Yeah. Yeah, I'd happened. rewind because I'd rewind and I'd buy a lot of fertilizer, a lot of corn. A lot of farm and, ground. Uh, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. No, good. <laughs> Just sit on it until I know when it's going to go up and then sell. Here's the next Pro one. stock. What's the, f- <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing you remember buying with your own money? Hmm. Dirt bike. Yeah. Both of you? Yep. The same dirt bike? No. Oh, okay. No, I Different. just t- took his once he bought it. <laughs> 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 A real... A larger purchase, yeah. I guess, but yeah. Yeah. not a coke at Casey's yet. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, we would uh, work on the farm and save up and buy dirt bikes. Emily, yeah. I could not tell you what my first purchase is. Probably like clothes or something, or like a Culver's meal for myself. Culver's meal. <laughs> <laughs> It's a big part of our lives. So. That and Quick Trip. Hey, yeah. I like I like trip. Culvers. I also like Quick Trip. Does the first Culvers look like all the other Culvers now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's really nothing. Their cheese special. curds and their custard is amazing. I you love see, you like Quick. their cheese curds. Yeah. Uh, you have to come to Wisconsin yeah. bars. Okay, and get so curds. when you're yes, for real, they are not <laughs> like a Wisconsin bar cheese curds. But when you're in Iowa and yeah. there's no other options, they are better than everywhere yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. When get I the, go to Wisconsin, I'm getting. Uh, cheese curds and then spotted cow or whatever mm-hmm. you know that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yep. lining Googles is that you can get that out of state, oh, though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can get that. Yeah, and the spotted yeah. cow, it's good, but like it's not it's like not amazing. It's just lining. In fact, you can't have it. Lining Googles was out of sock. It was out of sock, and Sundrop started. Sundrop too. Really? Yep. Wow. The nice. first bottling was in the 
the building is still there with all the right it's weird because when the sun shines into it the whole thing is green because all the bottles in the window <laughs> dad tells stories you used to take the bottles back to him really and re-bottle them yep. huh. that's yeah. how old he is <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, We're really throwing <laughs> Greggy under the bus there. Yeah, when he listens, he can't. Yeah, he's going to love this. <laughs> right. You're oh, yeah. going to get an explanation point on a couple of text messages. All right. All right. That's all right. Okay, Take let's, over it. let's dive back in. I want to I want to go back to uh, something that I discovered on Emily's social media. So your journey through FFA was life-changing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So, like I said, I did not grow up in agriculture. Um, had the experience with my grandparents' dairy farm, but other than that, didn't really have... Well, I should go back. There was a time in my life when I was younger where I was uh, more interested in agriculture, and then I actually had somebody try and not get me to be in agriculture. So I think that and like my sheer determination to prove them wrong, and then also being involved in FFA and just... I know, having an eye-opening experience of meeting other young people. I mean, agriculture is so cool. Like, the science, technology, I love science. So, like, anything science-related, I just geek yeah. out about. Um, so, I just, like, had all these different experiences. And then also, I wanted to prove this person wrong. Learned all these things in FFA. And then that's where I decided that I like talking about agriculture. And I like learning about agriculture. So, let's make a career or life out of it. There was also, if I've connected the dots correctly that was a uh, opportunity for you to change your diet as well yeah because you were vegetarian yeah so I had um, an eating disorder when I was in middle school Um, and so I wasn't vegetarian because of anything like health reasons health related or like because I wanted to save the planet or any it wasn't fear driven no okay it was because that was my way to not eat enough um and so was vegetarian, literally did not eat meat for like a year. Um, but now it's a very important part of my diet to make sure that I'm getting enough nutrients. And I mean, beef, especially because we sell beef. So like there's so many nutrients, mi- micro and macro nutrients that are good for you in beef. And it's, yeah. So just trying to stay healthy. And But vegetarian, didn't eat meat, used it as an excuse to not eat. And then. So it was like a body image thing like yeah i mean i could go really deep into like the mental health stuff. that's another thing that i share about too is mental health is super important yep. and a big part of my life but yeah it was a body image thing um wanted to be the smallest version of myself if i'm gonna be honest yeah. um and you're in high school right middle school like middle school yeah i was in seventh grade when it started and you're so. tiny now i can't imagine yeah. you were so I actually i haven't grown since fourth grade i was this tall in fourth grade really <laughs> yeah so which probably played into the yeah so this is a big thing i mean like I, we can go into it what what's the message you have for other girls that are going through that because i remember several girls that age you know yeah. doing the same thing not eating they were just like little toothpicks you know i mean there's a lot of messages i would share but you're you are important your health is important it's important to take care of yourself and you can eat like all the foods you want and you can still be healthy i mean i eat, like i said culver's yeah i i I mean, I do follow, like, right now, like, I would say, I don't know, a basic diet of meat, vegetables, culvers sometimes, but... Torched Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's another... <laughs> well, Tanner and I have been learning about macros and how to fuel your body, and yeah. it's, a, it's a, the balance of it, but meat is a huge... I mean, it's so good for you. Well, and pro... Right? I think there's a push right now, too, in just, like, the health sphere of, like, having protein and the importance importance of protein. And so, like, with beef and other animal proteins, it's a complete protein. You're getting all the things you need from it, whereas, like, plant-based protein is not a complete protein. Yep. And I'm not a dietitian, so I can't go down, like, all the yeah. routes. But, yeah, animal-based. I can't imagine someone trying to get their amount of protein that they need without meat. Like, you can only have so much whey protein and plant-based protein. Like, you'd just be drinking supplements all day long. Well, and that's another thing, too, that, like, is important for me is I don't want to, like, there's people on, I was talking about this with somebody the other day, on, like, TikTok promoting, like, the Bloom's, like, greens drinks and, like, even protein shakes. Like, I would rather have my nutrients come from real food yeah. like wouldn't you I rather just have a steak <laughs> i want it yeah I want it, from my meat. <laughs> I want it from my meat i want it from vegetables i want my milk like i want real food yeah 
Yeah, that, does that help you think with the story that you're telling in your direct to consumer beef business? The fact that you have been in a different situation and are transitioning and still living a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, I definitely use my story to talk about the nutrition parts. I mean, like I said, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, but I do talk about my own story and how like I use beef to fuel my body and there's different like here's what cuts I would recommend if you want like leaner meat or here's recipes like that are good healthy recipes but still include that animal based protein and so then when I share a recipe too then people are interested in that cut I would say too the beef business is uh not really profit driven because it's <laughs> not exactly large profit margin in it but it's more like get consumers to trust where their food comes from and you can't blame people for wanting to know where it comes from you know and if they if they buy it from us you know maybe they'll they'll know where it comes from and it's you know it makes them feel a little better so talk about, about the direct to consumer beef that's emily's baby yeah. there i forced them into doing direct to consumer beef because i wanted to <laughs> so, so you guys you guys got cattle because you wanted well to no. no we've no. we've always okay. we've always raised steers and stuff but just yeah. sold them at market yeah you know. When I was in college, I worked at a creamery where we had um, an on-farm store, and then I gave farm tours. And then, so again, going even further into me wanting to connect with consumers, and I wanted to find a way for us to do that. Um, and direct-to-consumer beef was the easiest way for us to do that since we do have cattle. So right now, um, we sell retail cuts and then quarters, halves, and holes. And we're just starting. We started last September, actually. We launched to our community during the Cow Chip Festival, which is a festival in our town where it's literally all about throwing dried cow poop to yep. see how far you can go. We have that at the State Fair. Yeah. Oh, really? Iowa State Fair, yep. There's a there's a contest for it. We shut down some of the town. It's not a full festival. No. But we, we also have a husband calling contest. Yeah, I've seen contest. that. I've seen yeah. that. <laughs> But then with the direct-to-consumer beef, I so I try and price our stuff and talk about it is I want consumers to, like, no matter what your socioeconomic status is, like, you can buy meat, you can buy foods to fuel your family. And so I know that there's sometimes, like, a status of, like, if you can't buy grass-fed, blah, 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 all these claims, like, then it this meat's not good for you. And that's not what I want to – I want people to know that – buying beef or buying other meat is good for you good for your family and so we're priced at a reasonable price where we're a little higher than the grocery store but pretty comparable because yep. we want people to know in our community too that like we're your farmers we're your farmer friends that's kind of my tagline um and that you can buy meat from us and it's good for your family and yeah. so are you selling like obviously direct to consumers but is it like local direct to consumers are you online we're online. Cuts? Yep. So we're online, but we only, so I'm working on the shipping logistics yep. um, of getting that. We actually have a raw dog food store in our town. Raw dog. <laughs> yeah. you, I knew you weren't going to let it go. <laughs> yep. Ding. Um, a raw dog food store. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's like she, can't even, she can't even get the spacing correct. A dog food store that, that, that sells, sells raw, raw meat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they ship their products, so I'm hoping to work with them um, to get some of the shipping logistics figured out. But the processor we use currently, they got a grant so they can do some upgrades so that they can be federally inspected. But right now they're only state inspected, so they're only able yep. to be we've, sold in Wisconsin. We've got some friends too and, and maybe you got it figured out now but that just have, some. That have uh, started and are doing well. Um, that just top, top of my head Kelly Garrett, Dan Byers. Yeah. Um, you know they yeah. got it figured out. They can ship across the country and get you frozen right. meat right away. Yeah that's the goal and we're we'll kind of want to do like a subscription box type thing too like but a butcher it's, box or yep, yeah. something yeah. like that. That would be good because I've had a couple of those. My parents always try them out here and there, and yep. it's always some grass-fed something or another from, from yeah. some specialty farm. That yeah. If you could just get some good Midwest beef in there, right. man, that'd be good. Yep, definitely. I love this. Okay, so Mason, you really haven't said a lot in the last couple of minutes. This is your weekend. This is your week to poll, right? Yep. And when do you hook up? We, uh, Our tractor goes on thursday okay so poll day when, when do the nerves set in or have you done this for long enough that you don't get nervous pulling anymore well i've never pulled here but dad's driving here but uh i don't know the first the first time you think you're going to be super nervous the most nervous that i was was and i don't know if this was the same for avery too the first time i ever pulled 
was driving onto the track. Once you're hooked up to the sled, nothing else matters because yep. you're just focused on what you got to do, and you're just going over it in your head. I want to go there. I want to do this. Yep. Just preparing yourself, and you don't really notice the other people. We're but, go ahead. But like here, last year and this year, I'll be on the track going down there, and when they pull pull the tractor into the arena, arena coming down that ramp is the coolest thing because you just look out and it's just solid it's just people everywhere and it's it's pretty neat yeah it looks cool sitting in the stands as you guys come in and i it's fascinating to watch the ground crew here because there is no space like you you have to be on your game whether you're dragging or you're packing or you're moving the tractors in and out because you all get tucked into a small little corner yep yep yeah it's an organized chaos (laughs) and that's why that's why there's the driver and one guy with him down there. You know, they only let one person. Otherwise, yeah. I'd be down there. Emily would be down. Sure. You know what I mean? And every crew would have 10 people there. Well, imagine if you added 50, six, people. 50 people down there. I mean, that yeah. would be a nightmare. There's no way. Right. I mean, more equipment, fine, but you can run people over. Right. Yeah. yeah. And people just don't pay attention in general. You know. I saw a TikTok the other day that was just that. I don't know if you've seen this one where they're in a quarry and a dump truck finishes dumping and somebody's helping guide him. The dump truck starts pulling away, and the payloader starts driving, but the bucket was in his view and drives right over the top of the guy that was oh. standing there. Oh, Ooh, yeah. L- large, like as in the guy was able to go underneath the payloader. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> but he had no. I was like, oh. But he had no. Yeah, that would be pretty morbid <laughs> on uh, family-friendly podcasts. Uh, I was going to say, that gets stuck on, stays on TikTok, but yeah. my stuff gets taken down. Right. No, like, <laughs> like, he, but the driver of that payloader had no idea. Yeah, he yeah, just right. drove over the top. And when I say over the top, like clear to man. Yep. Who wow. was sitting there going, oh, three feet this way is a tire, three feet mm-hmm. that way. Yeah, pretty big, pretty yep. big deal. So is there, I've asked this before, and to me it makes sense, but I I got an answer I wasn't expecting. Is there a playlist? We got our AirPods in, do we have headphones on, are we getting psyched up for this? No. <laughs> Thanks, my tractor sexy. Right. right. <laughs> what? I don't know why no. I thought that there would be, that well, you would, you it was a- Daily. I asked Daily Paulson last year. Oh. And I, to see if she had. Did she? No. No, nope. yeah, it's, it's one of them things that I just for me I just what you walk on the track and you just look at it and you just kind of get yeah. in, and it just. So I figured we'd have ACDC back and you know just yeah, something you think like football days like right. you get in the locker remember, room. Remember when I said you got to come out soft? Yeah. You got ACDC blaring, you're just nailing that sucker, <laughs> right? It's fair. You're right. right. I would be. You would be hyped up. It's hard to probably better to remain. I think a I would probably have like. Some classical music, though. right? Oh, yeah. like like Mozart. Oh, yeah, here we go. Nice. Then you might be too calm, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I like. I always listened to classical when I was in college, trying to do homework. Right, like it's like I listen mu- I, words. I yep. not, yeah. I would listen to um, you know, like Bridgerton on Netflix. Yep. I would listen to those songs. Okay. Because they're all like cla- or po- popular songs, but made classical. Nice. That or Disney. Cool. We would listen to Disney. Yeah. Very cool. So is the poll what you guys are looking to looking forward to the most this week coming down here, or do you have other objectives that you're looking forward to? I'm looking at where I'm going to spend some money, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, just <laughs> talked, you just talked about needing more for the pulling tractor. Well, yeah. yeah so but we got to make it somehow. <laughs> what are you going to buy? I don't know. Who I'm knows? Looking at, I'm looking at one of them, uh, like, chemical inducting systems. Oh, like a quick fill? Yeah, deal? like yep. a mix made or right. I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll have I, to do some shopping. Right. I That's wish cool. I wish Fiber Dash was here. I want one of their trailers. Oh, the Ooh. orange and yep. black yes. trailers, yeah. Was Dash 4.2 now. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, if you got But you know as soon as lot. you get the 4.2, it will yeah. be a 4.3. Right. right. Well, yeah, I'm, what are you going to do though? I had the pleasure this last week and it's been out for a while to go see the people that upfit John Deere's fast fill system on. It's a 5 inch, 6 inch. You said 6 in your six TikTok. 6 inch. Yeah, it's 6 inch. Fill they can fill sixteen hundred gallons in three and a half minutes on the on the sprayer on and the sprayer sucks it off yeah, yeah. that's pretty so you cool. got to have hot loads you're not right. you're not dashing right that while right. as it fills or injection I guess right but I just thought that was pretty that'd cool. be really nice when you're spraying your own but when you go around custom stuff you're switching yep. a lot yep. you know we do a little spraying what so what do you have for a sprayer uh well that's another story this year <laughs> this year I got uh at the beginning of this year or last year I should say. I got a 4440. Okay. And then uh, my business partner, Brandon, <laughs> so I bought a 4440 at the beginning of the year. I had a 4410 that my dad bought new in 
oh two. Oh yeah, one. I don't even know what year. It might even been a little newer than that. Uh, like three or four. Yeah, I guess. Who, who knows? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Ran that forever. Ninety foot boom. Really wanted a one twenty. Went with that full aim system on it. Raven switched it all over to Raven. Um, love it. And then my business partner Brandon was spraying some hay coming down the road at the fifth of July. Fifth of yeah. So oh. the so you got the uh, the Whitwin Parade sells chicken. Well, there's an old lady coming to get some chicken the next uh. day, some leftover chicken, and he was coming down this way. She was coming at him. I don't know how she didn't see where he was, turned right in front of him, uh, ran over the hood, rolled the sprayer twice, totaled the whole thing. But mind you, this happened in front of a church. In front of a church. He landed in the church parking lot with the sprayer. Nobody yep. hurt. Yep. It stood it up on its nose because the, the boom on the left side hit the ground. It hit the pavement. It had, it had wow. pavement on it. Walked Did you have a seatbelt on? No. Really? Well, yes, yes. Depends yes. on who <laughs> asks. You want to talk to his mother? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, he had a seatbelt on. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so that totaled that thing. He walked out. You know, he was a little sore the next day, but other than that, that was it. Nobody got hurt. Actually, the one guy. The one, one guy had a couple broken So ribs. what happened was he ran over the front of the hood with his left tires and then there was a car parked in the parking lot already he ran over the back of that with his right tires and i think that's what stood it up on its nose anyway rolled that thing destroyed it and then uh that was right before fungicide season so yeah. then we went and got a new holland so okay. we got a a new 310 new holland so gotta be on brand right yep. yeah. <laughs> right yeah. i think your sprayer is the only red piece that we run yep that's the only red equipment it's we got left red. anymore yeah, dealer yeah. dealer support, uh, Hennessy. New Dodge. I mean, it's the same company, right? Yeah, right. but yeah. Yeah. shout out to Larry at Hennessy. <laughs> yeah. He's shout a, out to Larry. He's a great guy. They're a sponsor of our tractors. Of the Pro Stock. Of the Pro yeah. Stock. Yep. <laughs> All right. So. Okay, well, guys, we took a little while for us to get started, get warmed up. This has been a ton of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed oh, yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you're not getting out easy. Every guest gets asked the same closeout question. Oh, we were prepping for this yesterday. I know, I did. I, yeah. I've started to tell people ahead I of time, I think it's Corey. probably smart. It's probably smart. So what does success look like to you, Mason? Um, well, since Emily was kind, kind enough to share with us, <laughs> I was going to not time tell them. To think about it, and I think that's a, it's a very hard question, especially in farming, because you never say you're a, success, you're a successful farmer. You know, there, because you can always get five more bushel here, cut some out here but uh to me i think it's being a sustainable farm you know throughout generations but also not having to work 24 7 365 yep. i mean you have to like we obviously take time to come down here and we got our tractor pulling that we go and do but if you can't go do that i don't think you're really that it's not successful if you can't have the fun fun on the How back come side you stole mine <laughs> because, because I, was I first. fed, I fed. Okay, I fed all of them this answer yesterday. No, you did. No, yes, you I did not. We were having this conversation. I wasn't even in the truck. That sounds like exactly the same thing someone would say when yeah. they have the same answer yeah. and the same answer. <laughs> yeah. But I want to, I want to dive into that a little bit deeper. You, there are very few people that say that they themselves are successful. Right. No matter what the industry is. But there are loads of people that are probably calling them successful right, yep. in other conversations, sometimes even to your own face. And we, we fall victim to that with the podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we look at a week where listeners are busy and they didn't download it, and we push really hard to do more right. and do better. And yet there's still that element of being successful. Just while you're in it, it's hard to feel hard that. Realize where you're at. Well, and even right. you know, looking out, especially at farmers, you know, as another farmer, you look out and you're like, "Oh, they must be successful. They got all this brand new equipment and all this." And in reality, in reality, they might not be. Right. You know, it's so hard to shiny paint doesn't mean you got money. Yeah. 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 So, are you guys gonna cop out? Are you gonna add to his? No, my answer is better. No. <laughs> <laughs> my answer, what I was going to say is, along with that, is like you have to have. For me, success is having. A business or work or something that like fuels you and is like enjoyable yeah. to do 
But we like we were talking about is there's no point in working so hard if you're not going to enjoy life. And to me, success is being able to have the balance of working hard but also enjoying the life that you build. I feel like tractor pullers have that part figured out. <laughs> yeah, y'all work hard. Yeah, mm-hmm. everyone that we've talked to works extremely hard, so you can have that kind of fun. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's nothing like working all day and then working all night on a pulling tractor too. <laughs> yeah, those moments you're like, why are we? doing this yeah. <laughs> but you get out there take the ride down the track and it's worth it yep all right avery you had anything i had something now i lost my train of thought <laughs> to add That's on okay. to mason's well you can think about it because right. emily's going to give us social media contacts so that way if people want to follow along with your story follow along with the 33 pole season in the badger badger state badger state tractor, badger pullers. State tractor pullers. Yeah, we only go to like 18 well, yeah, totally. but there's just yeah. but okay so there's the limited pro and then the pro stock so sometimes there's tractor pulls where only the limited pro is right. at that's fair and then there's some where both are at and some where the pro stocks are at. so yeah. basically at the end of the summer we're still going to almost all yeah <laughs> that's fair just don't look so at how, it that way how do people keep up with you guys our youtube channel is new age custom farming and then on facebook facebook is taking a while so if anyone has any contacts with meta to be able to get me to change my Facebook name. It's just my name of Emily Motsky. It's supposed to be Prairie Raised Beef, which is our direct to consumer beef business. That's on Facebook as well as Elsing Family Pulling Team. And then we each have our own individual channels, which are just our names. So Emily Motsky, Avery Elsing, Mason Elsing. Nice. I can't I can't let it end yet because I teased a Fent pulling tractor. Oh. <laughs> Give me a short what, what's going on with that? It'll be Saturday afternoon down the track. Yep. So no one knows it yet. Well, d- some people. Some people do, there's but rumors. Is it still in the trailer? Yeah, yeah it, 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 it hasn't been seen yet. It'll come out tomorrow. To you go. haven't seen it? No, no yeah, we've, we've, seen, we've seen it, but, but the general public, public has not. Who's driving that? So that's Craig Gladwig's tractor. Um, he's had a pro stock before. It was a Case IH called Never Given Up. It's a... Uh, I don't, not positive on the story, but his son had. It's a, it, it got built. His son came down with cancer. He's, well, that was old. he's my age, and that was probably 10 years ago, and that's when the original Pro Stock came out. And now it's uh, this one. Now he's cancer free. Oh, nice. So this one is never given up. Uh, what was it? No Hashtag, and he was going to put like stronger than ever under it or something. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. That's well, going to look sharp. Yeah, I, I assume it's that. black. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's so sweet. Cool. It's sweet. <laughs> we, so we drove down on Monday night, and we were down at the shop. So our tractor pulling friends, Wildman's, that's who like helps build all the tractors. There is five different pro stocks in there that are all pulling here, all five different colors, five, yep. five different brands. I think I said that earlier, but they're all pulling throughout the week. And that also goes back to the beginning when Mason was talking about the, our tractor pulling family is – it was all five different pullers. Everyone was working together to help make sure everything was all done right. and ready to go. So yeah. That's really cool. Yep. No, this has been a pleasure. I appreciate you sharing your story. I appreciate you spending your morning with us. And now you got the rest of the day to enjoy the show. Yep. But, Corey, for the listeners, what do you say? Crack a bush light. You deserve it.